Okay, 2002 Nissan Frontier with a 3.3 liter engine. Uh, the fault code that we are attacking here is this knock sensor bank one signal high. And this is the same truck that uh, we did an EVAP smoke test on and we did a oxygen sensor on. And I'm not sure when you guys will see those videos and what order I put these up, but I'll put links for all three videos for this truck. So there's this would be the third one. And uh, so with these knock sensors on these Nissans, they like to hide them underneath the intake manifold. Uh, literally, you cannot get to the knock sensor without removing the upper intake. What I've learned, however, in years of working on these is the main connector, this eight pin connector that comes up right here. Let me get you a better shot of that. What you look at is um, you look at the wires that are coming out of this connector and what you'll find is you'll find a real fat wire of this eight and so the real fat wire is your knock sensor and the reason it's fat is they sealed the wire uh this is kind of in the way the this conduit yeah i don't, I don't think the camera is going to pick that up but this bottom right wire it's white is fatter than the rest of the wires in this harness connector. And the reason again for that is that there's a shield on this. Yeah, it's not much fatter. I've seen some of them that they're a lot fatter and that's an easy way to identify your knock sensor wire. So all of our tests are gonna be done right there. Um, the nice thing about having a professional tool like the Varus or the Vantage Pro or Modus, there's different models that use this. If you go to the home tab and then go to your guided component tests, and this is unique to the Nissan, pick the knock sensor and we'll go to component info and, and there you go. This is where I probably learned about it the first time is using this particular tool. And uh, what you'll notice is the eight pin connector and over here uh, where my mouse is pointing right there is my knock sensor signal wire. That's the one we're going after. And what we're going to do, get a little bit of info here. I like this info, this is awesome. Uh, it says, key on engine run at idle with no detonation. Signal should be about two to three volts. So what that's telling me is there is a bias voltage on this knock sensor. And really my main concern before pulling the intake off guys, I just wanna make sure that everything from here out to the computer is good. And so really all you'd be dealing with then would be the wiring harness that goes under the manifold and then the knock sensor itself. So my only concern in troubleshooting this knock sensor circuit is do I have my bias voltage on this sensor circuit? And if I do, it's getting a knock sensor. It's really that simple. So if you guys watched my other videos, um, I uh, talked about using this Varus edge and then it's wireless. And man, I'll tell you what, this is making a huge difference as far as having uh, capability of moving around the car, not being tethered to the data link connector. I like that. So as you can see, I'm way far away from it. All right, we're gonna use the guided test setup. We don't have to, we can set this up ourselves. I'm just going to hit view meter and uh, should click and make some goofy noises. Then we're just gonna back probe this guy. And this test alone, let's make sure, just in case my desktop recording is not working on this new tool, it is the first time that I've done it. I used some guided tests to get me here. If it didn't show, there's the connector I was pointing to before. There's like on, on pin eight and you see the knock sensor signal. So that's what I was pointing out. Um, if you look at this pattern, let's, let's go full screen on this. Um, I have 4.7 volts on this knock sensor. You're done. This knock sensor is open. This is a five volt bias that Nissan uses to the sensor. So what that means is the computer will send five volts down a line and then it goes to the knock sensor itself and the knock sensor will 
has an internal bleed resistor that pulls that resistance down or pulls the voltage down to a certain level, which on our spec was two to three volts. That one test alone, if you measure this eight pin connector and you read close to five volts, you're done. There's no reason to go any further. I'm telling you right now that if we were to do the rest of this test, which they're telling you to uh, tap on the block near the knock sensor and make these voltage spikes, so you see the, the pattern here, what that is is an AC voltage riding over top of a DC bias. Uh, that test is not going to work because that sensor is open. That's what that almost five volts tells me. Uh, for more on bias voltage, man, which, which uh, videos can I refer you guys to? I have so many videos on bias voltage. I'll, I'll, I'll put a playlist in here that I suggest you guys watch for other videos where we're dealing with bias voltage, how to use it and so on. Uh, it's really, really difficult to talk about quickly. Uh, very, very easy to use. Let's change this to a 10 volts. So you can see that a little bit better. That line was off the screen. Okay, so we're done. Uh, this needs a knock sensor. If this voltage was down about three volts, my next step would be to tap on the block and look for a signal. Uh, but you know what? Honestly, this is the one code on a Nissan. If you have a knock sensor code, you just need a knock sensor. Um, but pretty cool test. My harness, absolutely no question about it, is good from this location, main connector, all the way into my engine computer, wherever that thing lives. I think it's inside the truck. The wiring harness is perfectly fine. We can be confident reading five volts out here that our problem is from this connector back, which is this part of the harness. Uh, there could be a sub harness underneath that we wouldn't know has a problem until we pull the intake off. So uh, I'm going to tell this garage owner when he pulls the intake off to pay real close attention. If there's a sub harness connector, meaning you'd have your sensor and then another connector that would plug into the side and then another connector. If there's a sub harness piece in there, we're gonna do the sub harness too, just as a precaution. But that, no way to know without pulling the intake off. So next steps, pull the intake and put a knock sensor in it and pay attention to whether or not there is another sub harness connector. But there's definitely an open circuit here. Um, I guess maybe, well, I could show you one more test just to prove it to you guys. This resistance test that they give me, they're telling me resistance should be um, 500 mega ohms to 620. So that's 500,000 to 600,000 ohms should be my resistance on that sensor. Um, to do the resistance test, I need to unplug this connector. And guys, this is totally not even necessary at all. And if this connector doesn't come apart easily, I'm just not even gonna do it. If it's anything like that, connector down underneath. Okay, good. All right, so what you wanna do for the resistance measurement, and I just unplugged that with the key on. I shouldn't have done that, so I probably said all kind of false trouble codes, but uh, what we wanna do is we wanna go on that pin that we were measuring. I'm holding you up now, aren't I? I'm almost done. I may not do it. Just put my alligator clip on that eighth pin and then I'm gonna measure this connected to ground. So I'm already on battery ground and what I need to do is I need to take the leads of my Varus. This used to be this way, yeah, it still is. So the older, the older Varus, you see channels three and four, your own meter. So I just needed to connect my yellow and black leads. It's not polarity sensitive here doesn't make a difference for the ohm meter like that. Okay. And then we'll go to the home tab. I'm going to go to my scope multimeter, go to my digital meter and go to uh, ohms. It's going to ask me if I want to calibrate these. I do not. And what I expect to see is this to go completely open on me. You see we're in the mega ohm scale. That is an open circuit. So what that means, guys, is from here all the way down inside where the sensor is, 
we have an open circuit. Again, sub harness connector or knock sensor, either one, it's getting both. Just proving to you guys that where our open is, if you understand bias voltage, you don't need to do that test. That's it, faulty knock sensor and or harness connector underneath the intake manifold.